Isn't it good to worship the Lord? Isn't it good just to taste and see how good he is? Wow, 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 wow. And how many realize we, we need to allow God to awaken within our lives and awaken awareness of his presence and uh, that he's with us, that he'll never leave us, he'll never forsake us. Amen? You know, uh, when Vicki was giving that, I, uh, 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 last night we were sitting in our camper and uh, a little storm was coming up and we was just sitting there and, and kind of relaxing and all of a sudden they was the loudest boom of thunder. It, I mean, it literally vibrated our, our trailer. And our little dog, Max, he was on my lap, half asleep. He went straight up over the top of me. <laughs> and went around the top of my head, and I was trying to get a hold of him. But you talk about being awakened. I mean, I, I thought, wow, that's just how great God is, too, and how big. I mean, that sounded, I mean, tremendous. Carolyn said, undoubtedly, lightning or something hit very close to us, but... Well, I tell you what, it stirred an awakening in our little dog and Carolyn and I, and, and I'm sure it did all through that, that campground over there. But boy, do we ever need to let God stir an awakening with us and bring in an alertness of how much he wants to work within our lives. Let me share just a couple things with you. Uh, of course, Monday night's the men's prayer meeting. Wednesday night is our Bible study, and we're working on the seven churches of Revelation, so keep that in mind, and uh, uh, we'll be working on that. And then, of course, board meeting is this week at 6 o'clock, so keep that in mind. And, of course, this is Fellowship Sunday. You know, uh, I told him, I said, this is chicken weekend. We had a, a 50th uh, wedding anniversary, and guess what they had for the main meal? Or the uh, chicken. Uh, and uh, uh, so, uh, and, of course, it was so funny because the, uh, the couple... Uh, had their 50th wedding anniversary, and, and they were members of our club, so we threw a, uh, a, a big thing for them, had a cake and all this, and, and uh, uh, Deanna was saying, guess what, our church is throwing a surprise party for us, and we're having chicken today. <laughs> so it's a chicken weekend. <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool. Any other announcements that we need to share with one another this morning? Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh my. Oh my. oh my, oh my, I'd say so, Myra, okay, let's remember Myra, any other prayer requests that we can share, I know Charlie's brother-in-law, we've talked about him, but maybe tomorrow they're going to try to do surgery, Charlie is. Yeah, that's right, the doctor knew it would be real long, and black box after a partial brain mm. Any, any other prayer requests we need to share? Steve and Charlie, if you'll come, we're going to receive our tithes and offerings. But this, uh, this stand together, and I, I want us to lift Myra up and Philip is uh, your uh, first name of your brother-in-law. Philip, yeah. This lift Philip up, uh, the couple that had their 50th wedding anniversary, and we did that. Uh, Mike Boyd and Deanna Boyd. Mike's in the hospital yet. Uh, they've had to amputate more of the leg, and then they, I think they've had to go back and amputate again. So uh, he needs a touch from God as he's trying to recover from uh, the problems of sugar diabetes and losing uh, his leg. And so let's keep that in prayer. Well, let's join together in prayer. Uh, uh, Father, thank you that we can join our faith together and Father, thank you that we can lift our friends and our loved ones, our relatives up to you. And so we lift Myra up to you, and we lift Philip up to you, Father God. We lift Mike Boyd up to you, Father, and, and Deanna. And, and we're asking that you would touch them by, by the power of your Holy Spirit, ask you to, to work powerfully in their lives, and, and Father, bring strength and comfort to, to Myra and her family, I, uh, and, and, and just Wrap your arms of love around that family. And, Father, 
uh, for Charlie's brother, uh, just a brother-in-law, he needs a miracle, stabilize him so that uh, th they can do the surgery and more than that, just bring healing and work a miracle. And, and same way with Mike Boyd, Father God. I, I pray that you'd just touch Mike and bring healing. I thank you for that. And Father, we just thank you. We can cast our cares upon you, knowing you care for us. Father, as we pray over our offerings, may you have your blessings upon it. And we just commit that to you, commit our lives to you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you, guys. <clears throat> This morning, as I uh, share with you, uh, uh, if you have uh, something to write on, I, I want you to write down uh, three words, and uh, uh, we're going to talk about the introduction uh, uh, of these three words, and uh, uh, or if you, you, they're simple words, you can remember them. Uh, number one is decide, and uh, 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 the second one is decree, and uh, the third one is declare, and uh, I want you to think about those three words as the introduction uh, of this message. How many of you realize we need to make decisions, and we're making decisions every day we live, and, uh, but I want you to think this morning that in deciding that you need to decide according to God's Word. How many realize God's ways are better than our ways? God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And we need to align ourselves with His Word. You know, I, I was working on this and thinking about this message that I wanted to bring this morning. But, you know, uh, we live in a sin-sick world a world that has been cursed. And we deal with the results of sin every day in our lives. We deal with the consequences of sin in our lives. Uh, uh, it was amazing sitting around uh, 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 visiting with different people in the campground and our, our club. And, and, you know, you'd hear every once in a while, well, boy, these are difficult times. These are stressful times. Uh, these are uh, times that we never dreamed that we would encounter. One of the conversations over and over is, is uh, bigger churches having security now and, and having, uh, 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 and Scott and Michelle, uh, where they go up at Cherry Hills, they have a whole security team. And uh, uh, they're, uh, 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 they have uh, uh, continually going around checking doors and, and watching over, you know, and... Uh, 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 I talked to another uh, uh, guy, and he said there's three or four guys that have, in that church, have concealed uh, weapons, and uh, they're carrying. But who had ever dreamed we'd, we'd even be talking about that in, in our lifetime? And yet, you know, uh, you say, well, uh, it, may, you know, it may never happen, but you never know. Uh, you know, the places this happened, they never dreamed that it would happen there in those locations. But... When I was working on this, and I want you to think about this, how many of you believe if God's ways are better than our ways, if God's thoughts are higher than our thoughts, if his word is powerful, if his word is alive, and, and he begins to reveal insight to help us be overcomers, how many of you don't you think well to decide to say, hey, I want to make the word a part of my life? I want to decide to learn his word. I want to decide that because I believe that he has a higher order than the order of uh, the world of being sin, sick, and cursed. How many believe he can lift you out of that difficulty? That he can help you in the crisis of your life? And so what we're going to do in the next little bit, we're going to look at God's word, but you see, I want you to be able to make a decision with me. I want you to decide that, hey, I want to apply the word within my life. I want to anchor myself in the word. But now, how many realize the word is the written word? And, you know, it is a decree. It is written. 
And as you learn the written word, and the Bible says in Romans 10, 17, faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing what? The word of God. Now, take your Bible a minute, and, and that's my first scripture, but I, I want you to see this. In Psalms, the second chapter, in Psalms, the second chapter, in verse 7, here's what it says. I will declare the decree the Lord has said to me, you are my son. Now, he says, I will declare the decree the Lord has said to me. How many realize if you make a decision to base your life upon the word of God, you need to write that down. You need to, to make that a part of your life. It is a decree decree to you to say this is the way you can live your life, okay? So he says, the third thing, I will declare that. I not only will decide I'm going to obey the word, I'm going to write that down. And I'm going to, you know, the best place, you know where it needs to be written is up on the heart, that it gets into the heart of you, and you say, wow, I can live by that. I can base my decisions upon that decree. I can form and, and formulate that in my life. And then the third thing is I'm going to declare that. And when I declare that, I'm going to make a confession. That's what I believe. That's what I base my decisions upon. And I want you to think of those, and here's what I want you to understand, what we're going to do. I believe God has a pattern that will unlock the kingdom of heaven. And how many of you realize it's unlimited power, it's unlimited resources, it's access to a higher power that will help you be an overcomer in this world. Now think about this. Aren't you glad that we have a blessed hope called heaven? Shouldn't that be uh, something you hold on to? So I want you to look at these uh, uh, Hebrews uh, chapter 10 and verse 23. And it's been up here, but it says, Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider one another. And let me go on to, uh, no, I didn't have that. Okay. Let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as some uh, manner or as is in as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another so much more uh, as you see the day approaching. Now, I want you to look back. Let us hold fast to our confession. What I want you to understand: as you make decisions, as you decree this, you need to be declaring it, but you need to hold fast to that confession. You need to hold fast to what you believe. And, you know, without wavering, without doubt. How many of you ever had a problem with doubt? Okay. Now, let me give you this next passage of Scripture. Same Hebrews chapter 10, verses 35 and, and 36. And uh, it says, Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward. For you have need of endurance after you've done the will of God that you may do what? Receive the promise. Now, hold fast. Don't waver. Have endurance. If you make these decisions, you know, when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, I mean, you realize that needs to be a confession of faith that you are a believer in Christ. Shouldn't you hold on to that? Shouldn't you declare that? Shouldn't you make that known, okay? Shouldn't that be a part of what you make up of your Christian life? But now, I want to tell two stories, the introduction of this. Since I like dogs, and since I've got Max, and he's a super dog, no. <laughs> Cliff Harrell used to have sweet pea. Sweet Pea was the ugliest dog you ever seen in your life. It was a bulldog, and it could slobber more than you could even imagine, okay? But Cliff loved Sweet Pea, and Sweet Pea almost broke Cliff's heart when he had to have Sweet Pea put down. So Cliff, I'd always look for pictures because about Sweet Pea. Well, I read this story, and a guy had 
two big, strong-looking bird dogs. And he was so proud of those bird dogs. And he kept them in a big fence backyard, and they had the freedom to run. And he said, I was out there one day with my bird dogs, and this little bulldog come strutting down the alley and found a hole big enough, and it scooted under my fence and got in there with those bird dogs. And he said, those bird dogs spied that little bulldog and tuck in after that bulldog, and he said the fight was on. And he said, I couldn't get them apart. And he said, they fought, and they fought, and they fought. And finally, the little old bulldog got away, crawled under the fence, and left. He said, I thought, boy, that old bulldog, he learned a lesson. He said, the next day, I was out in my yard with them bird dogs, and here come that bulldog, and said, he crawled under that fence, and the fight was on again. And he said, they fought, and he said, I couldn't get them apart. And he said, finally, the little bulldog got away, crawled under the fence, and left. And he said, I went and told my wife, he said, I can't believe that. He said, he'll never come back. He said, the next morning, same time, here come that bull, all got underneath that fence. And he said, the fight was on. And he said, it's the same thing. He said, the fourth day. He said, that bulldog come the same time and got under that fence. And he said, my two bird dogs headed for the barn at crying and never bothered that bulldog again. He said, they was afraid of that bulldog. That's endurance. That's endurance. I mean, that's literally endurance. That bulldog would not give up. I want you to understand what this message I'm talking about is, that you have endurance, that no matter how difficult life may be, that you hold on to what you've decided, you hold on to what you've decreed in your life, and you confess that, and you declare that you're an overcomer in Christ. Can I hear an amen out of that? All right. well, my, can I do my next dog story? Doesn't that pretty well, and, that you need endurance? That little bulldog would not give up. How many realize we need to have that kind of tenacious faith? We will not give up no matter what the devil may throw at us, no matter how much we may be under attack, no matter how difficult life may be. It does not change one thing. You need to hold on. Hold fast your confession of faith. You need to have endurance, okay? My next story. Since I've got a little dog, he weighs five pounds and five ounces. But he can be the honoriest little dog. I'm talking camping this week, and I, I keep telling people, don't bother Max. Let Max make up to you. And one lady, she would not listen, and she said, I'm a dog lover, and dogs love me, and she kept pushing Max, and guess what Max did? He nipped at her. And I don't know how many times Carol and I said, just leave Max alone. And you know, Max did a wonderful job. He blended in. He sat at the camp, didn't growl, bark at anybody except that lady. And if that lady got close to him, he rustled up and, and, and would growl at her. Well, this story is about a little Max. Because this little dog, every day, a little girl would go to walk by the yard. And that little dog would come out and lunge at her, and she was scared to death of that little dog. Afraid of that little dog. And finally she told her mother, and her mother said, Honey, that little dog is afraid of you. She said, Oh, no, Mom, you don't understand. Said, He lunges at the fence. Said, I mean, he, if he could get through that fence, he, he would bite me. I know he would. And she said, Honey, you've got to stand your ground. And that little girl got to thinking about that. And so the next morning going to school, here come the little Max out there, sounding like he was the most vicious dog in the world, and he almost got at, her, at the gate, and she yelled at him and stomped her feet. That little dog locked up and turned and run for his dear life with his tail tucked between his legs and crying like a baby. Well, let me tell you, that's where Max is at. But here's the thing. The Bible says the enemy comes like a roaring lion. But you know what the next verse says? Resist him and he will flee. Resist him and he will flee. How many of you realize if you have endurance, 
If you have a confession of faith, if you have decreed that in your life, you have written that down, and that is a part of you, that you have faith in you to say God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. If you believe that no weapon formed against you will prosper, if you believe that you can go through the storms of life and you can come out on the other side, you can stomp your foot at the devil and you can resist him, and you know what? He will flee. Amen? How many of you believe that? You see, you need endurance. You need to hold on to your faith. You need to be willing to confess that. You see, when I'm talking about let, let us hold the confession of our faith. Let's hold the confession of our hope. How many of you realize when you read the Word of God and you allow that Word, it's not just casual reading, but you're reading it. Because it is the source of life. It is the seed of life that will get into your life and it will produce a faith that will give you the ability to be an overcomer and you need to make that sin. Now think about this. Take your Bible and go to... Let's see, I've got to see where my slides are at. Okay, yeah. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope. And holding fast characterized by keeping a firm hold, a tenacious grip that you're not going to allow anything to separate you from that confession, that you're not going to hold on to that. Now, look at Romans chapter 10, 8 through 10. And I want you to understand this. Romans chapter 10, verse 8 through 10, it says, But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth, and in your heart, that is the word of faith which we preach, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God is raising him from the day, dead, you'll be what? You'll be what? Saved. But you have to believe with your heart. You have to confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ. You have to decide that Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world, that Jesus Christ died for my sins, that Jesus Christ is the way to have eternal life. Jesus Christ is the one who will forgive me of my sin nature and give me eternal life. But you see, you have to believe that. Now, here's something I want you to understand that's very important. Jesus said in Matthew 10, 34 and 35, he says, if you confess me before men... I will confess you before the Father. Now think about that. If you confess me before men, I'll confess you before the Father. But if you fail to confess me before men, I will not confess you before the Father. Confession is important. Confession is very important. That you need to declare what you believe. You need to tell what you believe. You need to speak what you believe. You need to be so persuaded that it is as Easy to talk about your job as it is to, to talk about your faith. I told Vicki, I said, I did something that she would never believe I did yesterday. I was in a quilting shop, and I grabbed a hold of a quilting machine. And then they told me the price, and I turned it loose. <laughs> I thought, yeah, that was fun, but not that much fun. <laughs> yeah, but you talk about what's important to you. You talk about what's real. You talk about what's meaningful. You see, what he's saying is that you need to hold fast to this confession. It needs to be a part of your life, and you need to tell people about it. Is that not true? Now, Titus 2.13, it says, Looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. How many of you need to talk about your blessed hope? Your blessed hope is heaven. Is that not true? And listen to me. You know, I, I say this all the time. Heaven, the benefit of heaven, no sickness. Pretty good deal, isn't it? No pain, no suffering, no death, no sorrow. Aren't those good benefits? Shouldn't that be a confession, a blessed hope that controls the way you live and act and talk? I don't know about you guys, but I think that's a, a, a pretty cool thing to have in my life, that I hold on to that, amen? And that we think about it and we trust in it. Now, bottom line, never lose sight of the fact 
that this world is not your home. How many of you believe that? This world is not your home. How many of you, sometimes we act like we're making plans for eternity about our living here in this world. But it's only temporary, guys. I mean, your home is heaven. Your home is your destiny with God. That should be something that you hold fast to, that you confess, that you declare, that you speak about it, that you share it with people, that it becomes an important part of your life and that it becomes real to you. Now, look at this here in 2 Peter, the first chapter. And I want us to listen. I want you to hear this as I read it to you. It's starting with verse 2. It says, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. Now, just stop just a minute. Grace and peace be multiplied. What's multiplied mean? Doesn't it mean abundance, that you're multiplying, that you're increasing, that it's becoming more and more and more in your life? And so here's what's so important about this. As Peter is writing, he says, grace and peace be multiplied in you in the knowledge of God. How many realize this word is alive and it's powerful? And when you look and search out the decrees of God, it unlocks, it unlocks for you and multiplies grace and peace within your life. You know, when you live in chaos, let me realize anxiety and all of the different things just overrun you, okay? But God says, I'll give you a peace that passes all understanding. I'll give you a peace that even in the midst of a battle, you can have peace. In the midst of chaos and confusion of the world, you can have peace. And my grace will always be sufficient. So here's the thing. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of of Jesus Christ as his divine power has given all things pertaining to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called you. Now listen to this. By which has been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through love. Now think about this. Do you realize what he's saying? You see, this deciding off of the word of God, all of these promises, all of this decrees that God has written, all of these things that God is putting in, in that book, it's not just a read a nice little Bible story. It's discovering that God wants to place within you his divine power. God wants to manifest within you his marvelous grace. God wants to manifest within you abilities, now listen to this, that will help you in the difficulties of this world. Confession of faith on our journey to heaven. Confessing God's word. Allowing God's word to mold and shape who you are and what you are in this world. This world is not my home. i got to journey through this world. But now think about this. When the children of Israel came out of Egypt, one of the most miraculous things that we overlook, they were slaves. They were being punished. And when Moses would speak to the Pharaoh, he would turn around and take, more punishment out on the Israelites. They were starving, and they were working unbelievable hours. They were toiling at trying to exist. But when they came out of Egypt, they ate of the Passover lamb, and the Bible says there was not one feeble person among them. When you call that a miracle, okay? Now, that's the beginning of that, the Red Sea parted, and they crossed on dry dry ground. The Egyptians were foolish enough to go into the Red Sea, and God caused the Red Sea to close up on them. Their wheels fell off. They couldn't get out. They were destroyed in that sea. That's pretty miraculous, isn't it? God caused water to come out of rocks and give them enough to feed their 
animals and, and our, our drink and for all the Israelites to drink. That's a miracle. God sent manna down, and it was enough food to sustain them. You follow the history of their journey, and God was unlocking the supernatural to take them to the promised land. And I'm going to tell you what, he's the same God as he was yesterday, today, and forever. And we're on our journey to heaven. And I want you to understand, if you'll dig into this book and begin to read this book, you'll discover that he will unlock divine principles that will help you live victorious. Amen? Because we are his children. We are the people of God. And as we look to him, we'll discover that God, and that's what Peter was saying. He says, I want you to understand. Grace and peace can be multiplied to you. I want you to understand he's given these precious promises to you. Now, let's go on and look at this again. And listen to what it says. By which has been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption of the, the world through lust, but, for, but also for this very reason, giving all what? Diligence. And look at here, add to your faith. You know, multiplication, it multiplies. When you add, guess what? It increases. Is it not true? So he said, here's the thing. I want you to add to your faith. How many realize that there is a building of your faith? There's a building of a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And the way you add is that you read the Word, you meditate the Word, you pray the Word, you spend time in the Word, and allow the Word to begin to get a seed in your heart. Now, isn't it amazing that when you plant a seed, that seed produces new life, and it begins to spring up. Man, the one thing I can say, Steve, my garden, while I've been gone these last few days, and all the water, it survived. But my cucumbers are as, I'm t I can't believe, I told Carolyn, I said, that garden is literally tuck off. And guess what? The weeds are chasing it pretty fast. <laughs> yeah, it looks to me like Carolyn's going to hold come Monday. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, yeah. It says, add to your faith virtue. And it goes through, and it tells you all these ingredients to begin to add to your life. And now, let's go on down and, and listen to what it says. For if these things are yours and abound, you'll be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted, even to blindness, and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brother, be more diligent to make your call and an election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Wow. Doesn't that create a, a challenge in you? To say, wow, I need to see this addition. I need to see this multiplication. I need to start spending time and learning these promises and allowing God to develop within me because I'll I won't be unfruitful. I'll abound in God's fruit. I'll have an entrance made that I can tap in to the unlimited abilities of God's kingdom. Isn't that pretty heavy? That should create a challenge to people to say, wow, there's more than I can even imagine. There's more abundance than I can even uh, explain. But you see, all of these principles that we're going to talk about, all of these things that God is doing are simply promises to his children, promises to those who decide, who begin to decree that in their lives. Okay? And not only that, that they begin to declare it, that they begin to speak about it, that they begin to confess that. You see, what do I mean by a confession? It's a statement of what you believe. It's not what you hope might happen or think could happen, but what you honestly believe, I'm standing on God's promises and I'm confessing that before my life. I believe that. I'm persuaded of that. 
I'm going to hold fast to that. I'm going to have endurance. I'm going to be tenacious. I'm going to resist the forces of evil. I'm going to resist the enemy. I'm going to make a stand, and I'm going to make that con my con confession. Now, listen to this. Look at these things. What God says about you through his word. I can do how many things through Christ? All things. How many of you believe that? My God shall supply how many of my needs? Please. The faithful man shall abound with blessings. Pretty heavy, isn't it? Okay, and, and here's one that slips by us. It says, your whole house will be saved. That's what Paul said to the Philippian jailer. He says, you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and your whole house will be saved. Why would it? Because it will be the confession of your mouth. It will be the way that you live your life. It will be the standard that you set. It will be the principles that guide your life. Okay? Now, look at the next. Let me see if I got the rest. Yeah. Let's talk about Proverbs 18.21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Do you realize that we're snared by the words of our mouth? You know, I want you to think about this. There's powerful results when you speak the word of God. You see, Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. I, believe, I love what one theologian said. He said, if he wouldn't have said Lazarus, and he said, come forth, he said all the graves that had opened up. But he spoke and said, Lazarus, come forth. Jesus said, rise and walk, and the lame man walked. Jesus spoke to the fig tree. Now, this is where we're going to spend a minute. To, this is very important. Jesus spoke to the fig tree. He spoke to the demon. But take your Bible and go to Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. And this is where we'll end this morning, but I want you to see this. And this is so important, guys. Mark chapter 11. I've got to get there myself. And if you pick up in verse 20, you have the cursing of the fig tree. Okay? And Jesus spoke to the fig tree, and the scriptures followed down, and they were amazed because when they came back, the fig tree had withered and died. And Jesus simply cursed that fig tree, simply spoke to it, and they were amazed. But then, let's pick the lesson up here and see what the Word really says. And so, at verse 21, And Peter remembering and said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. And so Jesus, verse 22, answered and said to them, Have faith in God. For assuredly I say to you, whoever says of this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things which he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Now here is a powerful lesson about deciding, decreeing, and declaring. Because I want you to understand, they were amazed that Jesus spoke and the fig tree cried. But he turned around and he says, if you'll have faith in God, you can talk about your arthritis and not sleep the next night. Very true. Because let me tell you what, it's as powerful in the negative as it is in the positive. You spend all your time talking about your aches and pains. You talk all the time about your problems. You talk about all the times that the tribulation. You talk about how difficult it is. You confess all of these different things. And guess what you'll get? Exactly what you talked about. You'll get it over and over and over. Because I want you to understand it works in the negative as well as in the positive. But when you talk about what God's Word says, and when that becomes a decree in your life, and that you make that decision that that's how you're going to live your life, and you make that your confession, and you share that with your family, and you talk about that, and you rehearse that over and over, guess what you'll do? You'll experience the unlocking of God's kingdom, and God will bless you in your going, and God will bless you in your coming, and all that you set your hand to do, God will bless you. Because he says you can speak to the mountain. You can speak to those things. But I want you to understand, here is a note of caution. 
I've been in the ministry 40-some years. I've been saved almost 50. Okay? Carolyn and I have been a student of what I'm sharing with you. Have we always been faithful to it? No, we've made some mistakes. <laughs> and, and we blundered. But I want you to understand, you can't walk out of here and start making these confessions and thinking that everything's going to happen in your favor. Because it's got to be birthed in you. It's got to become a part of you. You've got to decide and you've got to decree it in your life. You've got to let that thing get birth in you, and it's got to begin to live through your life. It's got to become a part of your life. It's got to be something. Let me tell you, what I'm simply saying is that it is so much a part of you that it comes out of you. It's a natural part of you. It's the way you choose to live your life. It's the way you choose to talk. And I want you to understand we live in a negative world. We live in a sin-sick world. We live in a difficult world, and it will come out against you. It will war against you. It will come and attack you. It'll do all these different things in the Navy, but that's where the endurance, that's where the tenacious comes. That's where deciding I can make a stand and I can be an overcomer. And I can win. Instead of losing the battles, I can be an overcomer. And you see, that's why it's important because it says, do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward, for you have need of endurance that after you've done the will of God, you may receive the promises. It's a decision. And that's why I wanted to start this message with saying you have to decide you have to decree it. You have to write it. You see, I shared with the Wednesday night group what I've done because I've been struggling a little bit in some areas, and I decided I was going back to my roots. I was going back to my foundation. I was going back what delivered me from cancer. I was going back what delivered Carolyn and I out of some unbelievable situations. I was going back to what I knew that I believed and I have cling, been clinging to for 40 some years. What you're hearing today is what I jotted down probably 35, 40 years ago and what I've rehearsed and memorized. Now, here's the, th the challenge of that, guys. You've got to be careful because if you lose focus, do you realize if you lose focus? Think about this. Peter walked on the water, didn't he? Isn't that, but he lost focus. When he got his eyes on the star, he started to go under. If you lose your focus, you lose what you've decreed. If you lose what is written in your heart and you get to focusing on the wrong things, all of a sudden, you'll feel like I was feeling struggling in some areas of my life. Does that make sense? I'm just being honest with you. I'm just telling you, you know, where I've been and what I've been trying to do with my life in the last little bit. Wow. So don't cast away your confidence. Yeah. Let's be that little bulldog. Let's be that little girl. But don't stomp at Max because he's a basket case. This make a decision. I'm going to stand on the promises of God. I'm going to hold fast to what I believe. And I'm going to make that the conversation of my life. Now listen to this. Let me jump way ahead. Here's how I felt. I felt like I'd got in a box. Carolyn asked me the other day, she said, what about life? And I said, it's a box of rocks. <laughs> but you can get yourself in a box. And sometimes it seems impossible to get out. But you know what? Jesus will help you knock the walls down. Amen. But you have to make the decision. You can stay in the box, or you can make a decision to say, I don't want to be in the box anymore. I read the story years ago of a man who was born crippled as a baby, and he said they would speak over me and said he'll never walk. He'll never live a normal life. He'll never amount to anything. But he said, 
they would put me in this box and put me in the middle of the living room, and there I lay. But he said, as I got older, my aunt gave me a Bible. And I started reading that Bible, and I discovered a Jesus that said I could get out of the box. And so he said, with every fiber in my body, I'd rock in that box. And he said, I'd turn the box over. And they'd come and pick me up and put me back in the box. And he said, I'd rock that box. And he said, one day, I'd roll out of that box. And they would strengthen my legs. And I started crawling. And he said, I want you to know I'm a whole human being today because of what Jesus Christ said to me in the Word. And I got out of the box. And I've spent the rest of my life saying, you can get out of the box. You can get out of the box. You can get out of the box. Jesus is the way. Amen? Let's stand together. As you stand with me, you may feel like you're boxed in. They may be something warring against you that you don't see clearly the answer. I want you to close your eyes with me just a moment. I, I just want you, as you close your eyes, I, I want you to realize Jesus has said, I am the way. I am the life. Jesus said, I am the resurrection. Jesus says, I am the truth. Jesus said, if you believe, you can confess with your mouth and you can believe with your heart. Wow. Jesus said, you can speak to the mountain and it'll be removed. You can speak to the circumstance. You can make a stand. You can cry out. You can cry a cry of faith. And say, Jesus, I need your help. And you know, he's more than able to do abundantly, abundantly. More than you can imagine. More than you can think. He's able to work in your life. As you got your heads bowed, your eyes closed, tell him, I'm ready to get out of the box. I'm ready to, to get out of that situation. I'm ready to believe and ask him to open up your understanding to the flow of his word. Ask him to work powerfully in your life, in that circumstance, that situation. Ask him to do what he's the best at, is being your helper. To be your friend. To be your healer. To be your deliverer. To be the one to make a way. You know what I think Peter was saying in that passage we read? Surrender. Surrender to his way. Surrender to his plan. So when it should surrender to knowing him and the depth of his word. Let's pray together. Wow. 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 Father, I pray. I pray in the name of Jesus that you'd help each one of us. Father, whatever our fault, whatever our weakness, whatever our, it seems to have us boxed in, God, that you'd make a way where there seems to be no that, God, you would work powerfully in our circumstances. You'd work powerfully in our situations. And, Father, that help us this morning to tap in to the abundance of your kingdom and all the resources. Open the windows of heaven and pour out your spirit upon us, Father God. As Vicki had shared, cause an awakening within us, Father God. Cause a fresh, new awakening of your spirit, Father God. A fresh, new awakening to your word. And I thank you for it. Father, I pray that each person here this morning, God, this will be a new beginning, a beginning of victory, a beginning of living as overcomers in this world. And I thank you for what you're doing. Wow. Father, you can tear down every stronghold. And I ask you to do that. You can break every chain of bondage. I ask you to do that. I ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, to create such a hunger and thirst within us that we'll hunger for more of you, more of your word, Father God. It'll come alive within us and make us lights that glow with your glory. Thank you, Father God. Father, thank you. Thank you. Father, I ask your blessings upon the the food, Father God. I ask your blessings upon our fellowship. I ask, Father, this will be new beginnings today. 
And I thank you for what you're doing. Love you. We surrender to you. We submit to you. And Father, we resist the devil in the name of Jesus and, and all of his confusion and all of his chaos. We command it to be gone in the name of Jesus. Wow. We proclaim victory in Jesus' name. God, I proclaim victory for Kincaid Christian Fellowship. Wow. Give you praise, Father God. Wow. Give you praise. Wow. Thank you, Father God. Wow. Now turn around to somebody. Look them. Just smile at them. Turn around and say, He is able. He is able. Whispers of love. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long.